A very good evening to you, Doctor, and thank you for joining us on the Daily Roundup. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Now, before we speak about the HIV prevention injection, Doctor, what strides have been made in the last decade in the fight against HIV? Well, firstly, just in terms of the contraction, so what we've <laughs> been trying to do in the past couple of years, particularly the past decade, is reduce particularly mother-to-child transmission, which we have managed to do significantly. This is something that is preventable. So just because the mother is positive doesn't mean the child has to be positive. As long as we know on time and we are then able to prevent by giving the child certain ARV treatment but by the, from the time they are born, we are able to prevent transmission. Um, also by doing making certain decisions when it comes to, you know, the child's first particular six weeks of life and thereafter. So that is one particular important stride that we've made in the past um, decade is to reduce the transmission between mother to child. And then also just in terms of the medication that we use, years ago, patients would need to take three, four tablets at once, which reduced adherence because patients, nobody, not just patients, nobody wants to take that many pills. The pill burden is very high. Technology and, and research is now advanced in such a way that you now have one pill that can contain three ARVs in one tablet, which means the pill burden is less and then adherence is pushed up because patients don't have to take that many pills. So adherence has also improved and the contraction rate has definitely also reduced in the past decade, definitely. So uh, back to this uh, HIV prevention injection, which is said to take to be taken every two months. Tell us exactly how this injection works. The, the, the injection is, is no different really from your typical ARV. The only difference is the mode of which we are over which it is being administered. So ARVs are ARVs, they work in the exact same way. So your PrEP and your PEP, which is your pre-exposure and your post-exposure prophylaxis, are all just ARVs. And the mode of basically the way ARVs work is that they prevent the cycle of transmission of the virus. So when you are exposed to the HIV virus, in order for you to then be considered HIV positive, the RNA will need to convert of the virus, will need to convert to a DNA, and then it will need to multiply. And so the HIV medication, because there are various groups of medications, and so those medications basically target various stages in the cycle of that HIV replication. So the, the medication that is now being used for your PrEP, um, your pre-exposure prophylaxis to be given every two months that now, as we know, has been approved in certain countries is not any different. It's not like we've come up with a whole new form of medication. No, it's still an ARV. It is still pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's just that it is more long acting, which means that instead of taking a pill every single day to prevent HIV, you can take the injection once and then only have to take it again within two months. So it's more the duration of action as opposed to the way it works. The way it works is the same as it's always worked, still targets the various phases of the HIV or the, 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 the virus. However, the duration now has changed. Now, unlike ARV medication and uh, PrEP, this injection is not free to the public. Why is that? Okay, so so it is, this is, firstly, this this injection is PrEP. So, so I think, let, let me just clarify that. This injection is PrEP. So all they've done is they've, con they, they, we, 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 research has basically just tried to, to provide a manner for people to adhere to their pre-exposure prophylaxis to reduce the number of contractions even further by providing something that is easier, being the injection. Now, in terms of costs, it's not to say that ARV and, and PrEP is, is, is free and this one isn't, because remember, back then also the tablets we take today needed to be researched. So the same as your high blood pressure medication and your diabetes medication, before they are allowed into the market, they must be researched extensively. They must go through trials, they must be implemented, and then they must be approved by the healthcare bodies. So once the World Health Organization has approved and the FDA has approved and it has gone through the necessary trials, then a certain drug can be permitted. But remember, you still have the cost of production that 
you're going against. So the, the biggest argument has been that the cost of production for this injection, because it is so long acting, is much higher. Because remember, ARVs are already very, very expensive. Your day-to-day -day person without medical aid, generally, even if you are within the higher socioeconomic group, most of the patients that we have cannot afford to buy the ARV on their own. They need medical aid. So ARVs are already expensive. It's not to say that they are cheap, and here comes a very expensive method. They're already expensive. It's just to say this one is much more expensive at this point in time because it is still very early on in the research phase, number one, and number two, because of the duration of action and then because of the cost of production. Because remember, these companies still need to make a profit, which ideally, I mean, you can have arguments with public health to say they shouldn't be making such a profit because it's health care, but at the same time, these are production companies. So if the cost of production is a little bit more costly, a recent study showed that the, uh, the injection for one year could cost up to 22,000 US dollars. So that's sort of what we're trying to get down so that it can be affordable for your day-to-day -day person with or without medical aid. And just before you go, uh, Dr. Luvindao, is the prevention injection available in Namibia? If not, when will it possibly be made available? Okay, so the answer to that is no, it is not yet available in Namibia. It is currently only, it has been approved for rollout already in Zimbabwe and the United States of America. That is currently how far we are. Further improvements have not been done yet. So we are still waiting in terms of when this will be done. I absolutely cannot say, but I mean, the fact that it has already been approved for rollout in a country so close to us should definitely give us hope that there is, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel and it'll definitely reach us. The only thing is when it does reach us to make sure that, you know, the, 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 the policy discussions and, and all have already been discussed at a much higher level to ensure that it is affordable for everybody. So it's the same as your ARV tablets started off in one particular area. At the end, it's made available to everybody. The injection will be the same. We definitely hope that the regulating bodies will be able to approve for the rest of the African countries and the world at large. But the only thing is when it is approved, will it be affordable for the day-to-day -day Namibian? Well, Dr. Luvindao, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you for having me.